Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror drama film, Gaia. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with two employees of South Africa's forestry service, paddling down a river riding a canoe. They are traveling in an indigenous forest on the Garden Route, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and South Africa. The river is surrounded by thick greens, exhibiting the healthy ecosystem in the area. Gabby, a forestry service employee, controls a drone in the forest, when a boy named Stefan suddenly appears, hitting the device until it shuts down. Then an African man named Winston, and a forestry service employee give her one hour to locate the drone, despite worrying about the danger she might encounter deep inside the woods. Shortly after, as Gabby walks around to find the drone, Arndt and Stefan, the father and son covered in dirt, are holding wielded traps from planks and sensitive materials. The father and son set up traps, and collected materials in the forest to serve as their camouflage, because they were wearing nothing but a piece of rags tied around their waist. In this scene, they look scrawny as a stick, as if they have been deprived of eating. Winston is on the other side of the forest, and he is patiently waiting for Gabby to come back. He did not bring his radio telephone, which is why Gabby could not reach him. At this point, Gabby is starting to feel bothered about her environment, when she notices someone spying on her. She tries to call Winston, but there is no response from him. So she runs away from the place, but at last gets caught by the trap barn and Stefan installed for hunting. Afterwards, a sharp wood strikes her left foot, making her scream in much pain. It pierces her foot, and makes her walk challenging. On the other side of the wood, Winston hears the distant screaming. He immediately goes to the canoe to pick up his radio telephone. But unfortunately, it gets soaked. Now he is left with no choice, but to track Gabby manually on his own. He immediately rides the canoe, paddling it down while calling Gabby's name. At the forest, it begins to radiate a glowing red light. The forest seems to be transforming into something bizarre. The trees are creaking, and it is getting eerier as the night falls. But the forestry employees are still looking for each other. Gabby is curious about the occurrence of being mesmerized by the strange phenomena. So she follows the path, where the light leads her towards an old wooden cabin in the middle of the woods. While this is happening, Winston perceives a figure following him. At first, he thought it was just a mushroom for a second, until it makes a move trying to hide from him, and Winston gets stuck in a puddle, after trying to escape from the strange creature. In the next scene, Gabby is knocking on the door, hoping someone will open and let her in. Her foot hurts, and this is hindering her every move. Currently, she is seeking refuge to stay that night, and she is lucky enough to find one. When no one answers, Gabby has no choice, but to enter it by herself. Gabby is now using the flashlight of her phone while wandering her eyes around the cabin, only to find out that it is empty with a few random stuff on a shelf at the corner. Then she grabs a blanket to lie on, and puts a bandage on her foot to prevent the spillage of blood. The following day, she wakes up after having a nightmare. Right then, the door opens, showing Bart and Stefan, who look agitated from a hunt with their spears, bow, and other hunting materials. At this moment, Gabby is frightened when Barnt speaks to her. He asks her about the person behind her intrusion, but she tells him that she is not alone. Meanwhile, Winston is out there in the woods, still uncertain about the soft growls coming out of nowhere. And then Gabby joins them as they share a dinner of worms and meat. At this point, it is evident that Barnt's son, Stefan, is not much of a talker. He is just silently listening to his father, and Gabby starts to talk about what it is like to be in a city. Meanwhile, the creature slowly comes to the surface, gazing at Winston when he steps foot on the island. It is a terrifying sight with its heavy coated skin, which resembles a tree's trunk, and the startling squeals it takes off. Without any hesitation, Winston beats a hasty retreat. He tries to hide behind a huge tree, but he still can't get away from the danger that is about to arrive. There are moving tentacles, creeping on the trunk of the trees where he is hiding, trying to reach him. Then it seeps into his body, and he can't do anything except to transfigure to be someone like them. The following day, Barnt and Stefan cleanse Gabby's wound. While doing so, Stefan is tempted to touch her, because he is slowly getting attached to her. After treating her wounds, the father and son left to hunt for food. Moments after, Gabby wakes up, and various fungi surprise her, sprouting on her arms. She tries to remove it, fighting the pain of the abrasions it causes. Then she grabs her radio telephone, hoping that Winston will respond. She is about to give up, when a static connection emerges in the background from her colleague. And she hears Winston utter unclear statements. He seems uneasy, so he can't talk properly, 
So Gabby decides to disregard it, with hopes that she will meet him soon enough. Due to this, Gabby makes a bright idea to help her colleague locate her, by lighting a fire in a small chimney. While wandering, Gabby discovers a secret compartment under the floor, after stepping on a rattling plank. There inside, she finds a photograph of a woman together with random mechanics and stuff. Then she immediately stays away from the area when Barnt arrives. Shortly after, Barnt gets rid of the fire by pouring water over it, and warns Gabby that they don't make a fire in the daylight. At that moment, Gabby opens the topic about the woman in the photograph, and Barnt confesses that it is his wife who died of bone cancer 13 years ago. He also admits that he was a plant pathologist. The dark hours have arrived. As the sky gets dimmer and the surroundings quieter than ever, a creature barges into the cabin. Then Gabby covers her arms with dirt, just like Barnt and Stefan. This will prevent the creature from smelling them. While Stefan is aiming the door with his usual cold stare, the thick full of tentacles and tiny fibers arm of the beast is slowly traveling its way to Gabby. But good thing, Bart was swift enough to cut it down. The creature starts expressing its anger, so it opens the door furiously, revealing its frightening appearance. This creature has the physique of a man, but its head is a fungus. It has no sense of sight, but it has a sharp ear. While Gabby is busy describing the monster to herself, Stefan doesn't waste any time. He stabs the creature mercilessly, making its blood splatter all around the area, especially Gabby. When the beast is dead, Stefan strips off Gabby's clothes, and wipes the blood on Gabby's skin because this will prevent her from getting infected. At this moment, the creature's blood is being burned, when Bard explains that the beast is taking over a human's body, feeds on the eyes, mouth, and lungs, connects to the fungal network, and repeats itself finally. It is spreading like wildfire. The next day, Gabby shows her phone to Stefan, who is amazed at the unfamiliar device. However, the phone flew away, because his father threw it on the wall. He yells at his son for using a devilish device. Eventually, the father and son go out to provide offerings to a tree, that seems to contain the strange alive fungus. Concurrently while the two are out, Gabby searches for clues in the private apartment. There, she discovers Barnes writing, stating that to see humanity's future, one must observe the monkeys in captivity. When Barnt and his son come home, they plan to look for Gabby's colleague, whom she lost contact with. However, Stefan wants to go, but his father won't let him go. While walking, Gabby sees the flashlight Winston owned. She figures that he is somewhere around the area. Gabby also retrieves the SD card from a camera they put in the woods. Then Gabby and Barnt find Winston's body covered in fungus. They don't know that Winston begs to get killed, rather than become one of the creatures. For him, dying a human is what matters the most. Winston could have been alive, and since he is intelligent and wise, he can make theories about the occurrences in the woods, and take them to their institution for further investigation. Unfortunately, he was attacked first. One morning, the fungus starts appearing on Gabby's legs. Stefan helps her out, by letting her eat the fungi his father gave him, hoping that this will help her from worsening into something uncontrollable. Following this, Stefan brings Gabby to his mother, because he wants to show her what happened after his family got involved with the organisms. To her surprise, the mother is a living tree. She's still moving, and a faint sound can be heard from her. Gabby catches the sight of a wedding ring still attached to one of her transformed fingers. This results in her becoming more intrusive of what's happening. She tries to open her broken phone, and is glad that it is still working. Gabby inserts the SD card retrieved from the camera that she and Winston set up in the woods. She finds photographs of the creatures there like she was expecting. While looking through them, Barnt is ranting about the future demise of humanity because of their reckless actions. This made her eager to feed her curiosity and find out the meaning behind all his words. Barnt escorts her to the source of these uncanny creatures. She starts visualizing the weird connection between the father and son to the tree, which serves as the breeding ground for the mysterious happenings in the woods. There, she spots Barnt sharing an intimate moment with the tree. She is bewildered, and wants to get out of that place. That night, she brings Stefan along with her to escape, but Barnt stops them along the way, convincing his son that the outside world is dangerous, and to Gabby's dismay, Stefan agrees to his father. Gabby is worried about Stefan's fate at the hands of his father, if she will not bring him together with her away from the place. With this in mind, she comes back to the cabin to save him. She grabs a bow and arrow in the house when the father and son leave. Meanwhile, Stefan is being sacrificed by his father to the organism. Stefan is trying to escape, but the roots are holding his hands tightly. 
This time, Gabby appears to save him, but the creature is helping Barn to get rid of them both. Then successfully, Stefan manages to release himself from being restrained. Meanwhile, his father is aiming to kill Gabby, so Stefan jabs him in the back. Considering the damage they have brought to Barnt, the two run away. They come back to the cabin to stay for the night afterward. However, since Barnt was left in the woods, the organisms turn him into one of them, instead of his son, whom the father plans to sacrifice. No matter what he does to appease them, the organisms seem not to listen because of their hunger to invade. Then Barnt lies on the cold ground, helpless, as the organisms consume his body. On the following day, Book catches Gabby's attention upon waking up. This is one of Barnt's writing, alerting and informing humanity about the upcoming reckoning. Gabby can't seem to understand the meaning behind Barnt's logical reasoning, until her days come to an end. Consequently, Gabby can't make it to the city, for she gets entirely infected by the organisms. Her body is covered with countless fungus, and she has no choice but to stay in the impenetrable forest. There is no chance of her surviving, that's why she pleads with Stefan to kill her, which he does. He is left with no choice but to leave her there, because she is now part of the forest, just like his parents. The movie ends as Stefan paves the way to his new life, to the city. He seems to be adjusting to urban life. He is eating alone and silently at a restaurant. When he finishes his food, he stands up and leaves. Then he sees that the food starts forming lots of mold and fungi into it. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.